The second ever Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship took place on July 25, 2004. It was held in Los Angeles, California in the United States of America. Now, there was a video game to go alongside with the tournament uh, a couple months earlier. It was called World Championship Tournament 2004. Now, for the prize cards, there were four of them in this case. It was uh, Yulevo, uh, Mateo the Matchless, uh, Sengin Jin, and then the Asian version of Sengin Jin. Now, for the winner himself, it was uh, Takawa Masatoshi from Japan. Hope I'm not approaching that. He was controlling Chaos Control, a deck so good that he eventually created the first ever band. In this series, I'm here to play every single World Championship deck that has ever won. The point in this series is to show why some of the cards in the World Championship decks are banned today, and why other cards that were in that, those decks that were thought to be good at the time are no longer the case today, and to see if every single World Championship deck can still win a game in today's current format. This is the history of Yu-Gi-Oh's World Championships. Hello everybody, my name is Kyle on 3639 Welcome back to another History of Yu-Gi-Oh! episode. This is episode 2 in the series, and in this episode we are covering the 2004 YCS deck, uh, which is also known as Chaos Control, which is also known as just straight up CED. Dear, dear God, oh boy. Uh, this, this deck made a lot of, made a couple firsts. First uh, off, it was the first ever Tier 0 deck in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, and you know how much Yu-Gi-Oh loves their Tier 0 decks. Yeah, this was the first one to ever reach that Tier 0 status. Number 2, this deck's the reason why we, we have a ban list. Yeah, this deck created the first ever ban list to ban uh, Chaos Emperor Dragon. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, pretty fucking spectacular. Uh, so yeah, uh, in this, uh, I'm not going to cover what's like the rules and stuff. Uh, if you want to see what I'm doing with the erratas, you can go cover, I explain everything and my explanation on those on in episode 1, which I'll put in the link in the description down below. Please watch that episode, I go into what the series is going to be all about and stuff like that. But without further ado, let's get in to the uh, card by card. First off, we got the Black Luster Soldier on the way to the beginning. This card is going to be amazing for us uh, because especially since we're playing with the Post Arata Chaos Emperor Dragon, uh, Black Luster Soldier might just be the better option for us. Uh, this card is still pretty good. Uh, it was limited to one for the longest time. Now it's uh, unlimited because of how fast the game moves. At this point, this is actually not worth anymore. Uh, we got the Chaos Emperor Dragon. Again, we're playing with the Post Arata, but even with the Post Arata, this can still help us win games and stuff like that. Like, holy shit, this should honestly be a fun time using Chaos Emperor Dragon. Uh, we got Jinzo, which was limited to one at the time. Same thing with the Chaos Monsters. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this was just good at the time. to get traps, and it could still be good just in case we first an Eldritch matchup. Uh, we got the Kaiku, the Ghost Destroyer. This was, uh, since, I, like I said, uh, this deck was Tier 0 at a point. This was just to counteract the Chaos Monsters, and could help us depending on the deck we're versing. Uh, we got Tribe Infecting Virus. This was banned for a while. I was actually surprised when I saw it was unlimited, but it kind of makes sense now. But yeah, 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 this card is going to be maybe good for us if we go into that grindier matchup. Uh, we got the Breaker of the Magical Warrior, which was limited to one at the time. Uh, just a back row removal. Could be a 1900 beat stick as well. Uh, that's about it with that card. DD Warrior later could help us because uh, we can get rid of like problematic cards, like something like a dra or not even dragon, uh, something like I don't know, just something that can't be destroyed by card effects or anything like that, but can get uh, just uh, banished. Uh, this can help us get rid of those problematic cards. We got the Shining Angel. Which is uh, pretty good. Uh, this uh, this is another searcher. Uh, we got Witch of the Black Forest and Sangin as a searcher. We are unfortunately playing with the uh, post errata versions of these cards, but that should be fine anyways. These are limited at the one at the time, as well. Again, just great searchers. We got Magician of Faith, which I think was actually unlimited at the time, but he just uh, uh, the winner decided to play two. Uh, this is just to search out the spell cards, and in this case, searching out one of these spell cards can actually help us win the game. So this can be very good. We have the Magical Scientist, just, just, uh, just to storm the field with extra deck monsters at this point. At the time, it was pretty good, but right, right now, especially with the fusion monsters we have in our extra deck, this is actually going to do nothing. But it's still banned for a reason, because, well, dear God, if it came back, imagine all the fusion monsters it can pull out now. Dear God, that would be really, really stupid. But... Uh, yeah, this is in there uh, now, but this ain't going to really do much for us because the fusion monsters at our disposal is not really that good to go against the current matchups today. We got the one Sinister Serpent, which is the post errata version, so this is kind of garbage for us. Now on to the, well, before we go into the spells, uh, I was actually surprised not to see Yadagaratsu in here because I was assuming it would be, you know, Chaos Emperor Dragon, 
do your field summoning yada and you know do all that bullshit. Uh, yada, yada lock him basically for game, but uh, actually he didn't play yada lock, so that's something, isn't it? Uh, no yada in here, just to probably make more space, though. So I kind of understand the move. Now let's get into the spell cards, our hand destruction cards and confiscation and the forceful century. You got your draw cards and pot to greed, graceful charity, and mirage of nightmare, which should really help us get to these chaos monsters. Uh, your destruction cards and dark hole smashing ground and noble man cross out. Unfortunately, no regeki. That kind of sucks. Uh, and noble man cross out is really just going to be a brick for us. So yeah, that's a that's a brick right there because no one really sets anymore. Uh, here's your uh, let me kit control your cards kind of thing and snatch steel and creature swap. Uh, let me reborn my monsters and premature burial and monster reborn. Uh, your back row hate and heavy storm and three MSTs, which is still a very good card to this day, even though it's been power creep. Uh, then your uh, token generators and the two scapegoats. And then uh, that's it for the spells. Now on to the traps. We got the Mirror Force, which was actually limited at the time, surprisingly enough. You got your Ring of Destruction, uh, Post Arata, of course. Uh, this should still help us uh, kind of end games and stuff, though. Even if the, with the Post Arata, it's still going to help us out. We got the One Call by the Haunted, which I th honestly still think was limited at the time, too, which is very surprising now you think about it. And then you got your two Torrential Tribute, which should be a trap card we really want to see this whole time. Now, I'm not going to cover the side deck because we're only playing single matches in this series. So, uh, yeah, the side deck really doesn't matter. But now onto the extra deck because it actually matters because of Magical Scientist. We got uh, Black Skull Dragon, which we're never going to pull out. This was just because this was around the time you were able to play unlimited fusion decks or like at least 30 f monsters in your fusion deck. It was called the fusion deck at the time. Uh, so, yeah, he played like just like 24 fusion, uh, fusion monsters and one of them just being Black Skull Dragon. Why? Just because he could, I guess. Uh, this can't be pulled out through Magical Scientist. So it's not. It's just nothing for us. We got the one Roaring uh, Ocean Snake, the one Punished Eagle, which was played at three at the time. Uh, one Ry Ryu Senshi, one uh, Fiend Sk uh, Skull Dragon, one Dark Balter, the Terrible, one Gilta, the D-Knight, uh, Musician King, two Reaper of the Nightmares, uh, Dark Fire Dragon, Flame Ghost, and then 3,000 Eye Restricted, which is the only cards we'll be able to pull out. Or the only card that's going to actually help us pull out, you know, pull out the Thousand Eyes Restrict, go into the Magical Scientist could really, with the Magical Scientist, will, will really, really help us. Uh, so, yeah, that's it for the deck. Now, let's get into the games. I am playing three games. They're all single matches. So, without further ado, let's get into those games. Alrighty, let's get in just straight into game one, shall we? As you can look across the pond, it's ah, it's Outleach. Hey, maybe we can actually do something though. Uh, he, so he does start off here. He is. Uh, I did win the die roll and let him go first because at this point I didn't know. Well, he only had a Conquistador in hand. He has a set pass. I summon the DD Warrior later. Go to battle phase and deal the fifteen hundred directly, sending the torrential tribute and passing turn. He draws into another Conquistador, but activate Eldritch Effects and Triple Tactics to get rid of the DD Warrior later. And then Eldritch Effects and the Conquistador to summon Eldritch to get 3,500. I scapegoat, though. Let's get it and get four tokens onto field to help me defend against this Onslaught. He does attack one of the tokens. And pass the turn with that, or at the end phase, the activate Conquistador, get Scarlet Sanguini on field, and then proceeds to pass turn. Uh, my draw phase, I draw another DD Warrior. I try to snatch still, but he has another Conquistador. Unfortunately, that kind of well sucks. Double summon the DD Warrior later, go to battle phase. Uh, try to get the Banish the Elledge. He activates Scarlet Sanguini to get the other Elledge onto uh, board. Uh, but I do uh, take 2,000 to banish the, uh, one, of the uh, one at 3,500 attack. And then simply pass turn. Uh, he draws into a Solomon Strike. He activates Scarlet Sanguini's effect in Graveyard, setting a Conquistador. And then he links off to Nightmare Phoenix, getting rid of the Torrential Tribute because I don't want to activate it because I want to keep the tokens on field. Uh, sets the Torrential, or yeah, sets the Solomon, uh, attacks over one of the tokens, activates Conquistador to set Scarlet Sanguini. Passing to my turn, I get a Graceful Charity, let's go! He has an Ash Blossom. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, set a Kaiku to the Ghost Destroyer and pass turn. He draws into a Red Eyes Fusion, uh oh. Uh, he activates Eldritch, sending the Scarlet Sanguina to summon up the Eldritch. Activates Scarlet Sanguina's effect to summon Hot Ghetto. And goes straight to battle phase, attacks over my Gaiku, and then uh, Nightmare over one of the tokens. And then he links off into a Verte. He's playing two Red Eyes Fusion? Oh no, he goes into Dragoon, and I kind of know it's uh, kind of game. Draw into, well, Tribe Infecting Virus. Well, I can't get over Dragoon, so I will surrender, and oh, that was a game one. 
Now going into game two, uh, well, the Ragoon kind of fucked this deck, but as you can look across the pond, I am versing Amazement. I do choose to go second once again, so let's go straight into it. Amazement being one of the newer archetypes that are coming out later on in the year, he does just set three and pass turn. Draw into a Mirage and Nightmare, set two, go to DD Warrior later, attack for 1500. He activates the Roller Coaster, uh, tapping the DD Warrior later, then reusable jar. Uh, I do. He still takes the 1500. Uh, I activate Mirage of Lightmare during main phase 2. He activates the Roller Coaster to add one of the Amazement monsters. And then during his standby, I do activate Mirage of Nightmare, drawing 2. Oh, what is some sick ass draws. He set ones and goes um, the Amazement monster. Spectro Amazement Trap activates, uh, I forget which one this one's called. Equips it to his own monster, passes turn. Go Mirage, I get an MST to get rid of the Mirage of Nightmare, keep my hand. Go Pot of Grid, and he Ash Blossoms in that. Wow. This actually is a shit hand now because of that. Uh, I try to attack over with DD Warrior later, which does happen, uh, making him lose 100 uh, or, uh, life points. He goes into another reusable jar, activates Monster Reborn, gets one of the amazements out once again, and on that summon, I Tarantula Tribute. He activates a trap card that actually protects that amazement. Well, he activates a reusable jar, banishing one of his traps to get another trap, attacks for 1400, and passes a turn. Well, let's see what I can draw. Creature Swap? Not too bad. Go into Sinister Serpent. Creature Swap the monsters, because that's the only monster he has. And here we go. Go into battle. Deal some damage with that amazement. He activates Roller Coaster. Targets his amazement monster. And then go into Main Phase 2. End Phase activates the Roller Coaster to get a amazement monster. So, oh boy. He activates Reusable Jar 2 to get one of another uh, amazement trap. Going his turn, he gets Waking the Dragon, which, okay, uh, he activates this trap targeting uh, the, his own amazement, then summons that amazement, but I, triple t or torrential tribute, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit, he has to pass turn. Go into an MST, and I, well, that doesn't help me, uh, MST, the reusable jar, pass turn. He draws into, oh, an amazement monster, that's not what we need. He summons the amazement monster and just straight, straight to battle, dealing 1600 to me. I need to draw something good. Please, please, it's a forceful sentry. Not good. I do activate Sinister of Serpent's effect. Set this Sinister Serpent and just pass turn. Who activates uh, uses of charge during my end phase, getting one of his traps back into him. During his, um, now during his turn, he sets two more and uses the amazement attack over Sinister Serpent. And then the pre post errata Sinister Serpent has to banish itself. Draws return a Monster Reborn. This actually might help. Go into this amazement. Uh, he activates a trap in response, but it doesn't matter. I'm getting one of his amazement monsters. Attack over your amazement monster. Uh, get the hell out of here. But a uh, deal with thousand pass turn. Uh, let's see, please just don't draw anything. A pot of extravagance is actually pretty good because there's no more zones. Activates roller coaster and then roller coaster to its effect uh, gets, uh, well, that amazement once again. And here we go. Uh, no, he activates the trap, gets to summon the amazement. Amazement effect gets wow, targets and sends, not even destroy. Uh, attacks 42600, uses reusable jar to get one of his traps back, and sets that trap in past turn. Okay, Sangan. Okay, we can work with it. Sangan, summon an attack. Uh, he does equip something to Sangan, doesn't matter, attack Sangan into battle phase, uh, going against his monster, I'm taking damage, but it's not lethal, Sangan's effect, I search out a magical serpent, that doesn't matter, banish the light in the dark, give me Black Cluster Soldier. Black Luster Soldier's effect. Banish the monster. Forceful Sentry. Get that pot of extravagance out of here. Pass turn. Let's see what he can do. He draws into an Ash Blossom. Normal summons an Amazement monster. Activates the effect. Sets a trap. And then realizes he really can't do anything after that. Yes! We won a game. Let's go. Time for game three. Let's go. We got to win against Amazements. Yes, we don't know what the Amazements do, but we still won. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Actually, a pretty decent hand, but he is going first, unfortunately. And look at it across the pond. It looks like it's a Sacred Beast deck. Ah, let's see what we can do. Uh, he goes into a monster activate. Again, I have no clue what these mo or spells and monsters do. He activates Dark Bakening or something like that. Goes into one of the Sacred Beasts, unfortunately, which is the, uh, the Winged Dragon Raw version. Activates Fallen Paradise to search out a two cards and then Lure of Darkness. Oh, boy. Uh, kind of has a set here. It goes two sets past turn. Okay, we have a kind of an amazing hand, though. We go Graceful Charity. Draw three. Discard two. We got the Chaos Emperor Dragon. Please let us resolve. We just need a Dark in Graveyard. Activate Premature Barrel, and he Cosmic Cyclones Premature Barrel after I set one. Well, I'll uh, activate Forceful Sentry. Get that monster reborn out of here. Go with Mirage and Nightmare, and he has a second Cosmic Cyclone. 
Well, that doesn't help me. I just passed turn with that, and hopefully he can't do anything. He normal summons Ghost Bell and then goes Vert Day, and I ain't dealing with this. I'll just concede because I cannot beat Dragoon with this. Back from the duels now, and uh, wow. I did better last episode than I did this episode, which is kind of weird. But it actually makes sense because we were some more better decks this time around than we did last time. So I guess that makes sense. Even though we weren't able to resolve that Chaos Emperor Dragon, like we had it like two games and we just couldn't resolve it. It really sucks, but we did get Black Luster Soldier onto the field. And once we did, we kind of won that game and with amazement, this uh, deck really does do that. Man, those spells are fucking still powerful. There's a reason why they're still banned today. Things like Riceful Charity and Pot of Greed are even better today than they were back then. Like, holy shit. Same thing with Mirage of Nightmare. God, dude, especially in a day where we play hand traps, Mirage and Nightmare is fucking crazy. Yeah, there's a reason why it's still currently banned. Even though we didn't resolve the Snatch still either, it got destroyed by Conquistador. Uh, it still doesn't, uh, it's still, like, pretty good. Uh, it, it, I mean, it just really sucks. It was an equip spell, so he's able to get rid of it. Uh, really, since to two times we tried to get it off, they got rid of it before we were able to steal the monster, which, uh, really... Really sucks. Scapegoat is still a pretty good card, and that's the reason why it's limited to one. Able to see this, especially now in the Link era, just linking off is fucking amazing. Torrential Tribute, there's a reason why Elder players and, like, most control decks still play Torrential. It's a fucking amazing, amazing card. We didn't get the Magical Scientist, but yeah, there's a reason why Magical Scientist is still banned today as well. Really sucks that we couldn't get the Chaos Emperor Dragon, but I'm still happy with what we did. So, yeah, hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more. In the next episode, we are covering the peak of GOAT format. I'll see you then.